In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns and former champion Brock Lesnar are currently the heads of the company table when it comes to annual contract value. Meltzer reported both men make more than $5 million a year, which we knew about Brock Lesnar. We knew that yeah. Brock was making in excess of $5 million a year, but Roman Reigns also up there, $5 million per year, guaranteed deals. Another unnamed talent is around $4 million, and he added, quote, a lot of the top talent is now at $2 million and some at $3 million. If you recall, it's uh, this is just the way life works. So when when AEW was kicking off, WWE went on this big deal where they started offering to pay everybody double, and there were a lot of people that were making around one million downside, and so the top talent ended up making, as noted here, one person at four, a lot of top talent at two, some of them are at three. It's probably not hard to figure out who these individuals likely are. I mean, just look at the show. Find out who never does jobs is always protected. I don't know. Let me make this clear. I don't know that the person who is making $4 million is Randy Orton. But if I found out that the guy that was making $4 million is Randy Orton, I would not be the least bit surprised. You're, you're 2 and $3 million. I mean, watch the show. It's your Charlotte Flares and, you know, the the folks that are getting main event pushes regularly, always there in the, in the year. Becky Lynch, for example. I mean, they're making plenty of money. But the problem here is that they started offering these these deals to more than just the tippy-top talent. So, essentially, if, if you were... A great example would be... Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, the point is, if you were lower on the totem pole, you were also suddenly making twice as much money as you were making before. And the problem is, when uh, AEW ends up doing fine and you're not putting them out of business and there's no chance of putting them out of business and you're paying all of these these lower-tier guys double what they were making, and not just guys but women as well, well, then all of a sudden, you know, the story of the year is they've cut 85 talents or whatever the number is. So it was it was uh, as usual. And it's not the talent's fault because, you know, they're not going to offer you, hey, you were making, uh, you know, 250. Now we're going to pay you five. Take it or leave it. Well, I'm taking it. Well, now all of a sudden you're making five hundred thousand dollars and they're looking at their little budget right here. And, oh, I'm sorry. You got to go. We ain't paying you five hundred thousand dollars. And we haven't seen any yet. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there are individuals that got cut and uh, they end up coming back for less than they were making. I mean, it's inevitable that's going to happen with some of them at some point. But anyway, that's the story. So, as usual, life's not fair. If you're if you're a Randy Orton, uh, they're going to double your contract. You're making a preposterous amount of money compared to, you know, what you used to be making. But they ain't cutting you because they don't want you to go to AEW. If you're a whoever... You know, they're not worried. I mean, I don't know what the whole situation was with Nia Jax, but she was clearly making more than they wanted to pay her. And so they weren't concerned about her going to to NXT. And so she ended up getting cut along with 85 other people over the last year. So that's life in uh, WWE and doesn't really trickle down. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, trickle-down economics is a uh, has always been... Uh bad proposition for most of us who are waiting on that money to come trickling down but happy for the people at the top of the food chain that's for sure happy for the people that did make out because of AEW and I mean Randy Orton Becky Charlotte Reigns Lesnar you know whoever else is up there awesome that's awesome we've seen the cuts happen where they have buyer's remorse Good Brothers, the greatest example of that. I think one of the more high-profile examples of that. You talked about There was somebody... another one. They had $750,000 was their new deals. And then all of a sudden and... they realized, we're paying these guys $750,000? They cut them. Well, and think about that, too. And this is not... And I love, you know, Carl Anderson goes back a long way. I'm cool with that. But, like, $750,000 a year. You know, they, they were losing their minds. Drake Maverick left, came back. He's kind of got a weird situation because I don't know 
you know, with his NXT contract and all that sort of stuff, you know, did he come back for less? I bet you he probably would if they offered him less. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what you can really say other than they're going to only take care of a certain group because they only look at a certain group as being valuable and where they have made mistakes are sure you've let Bray Wyatt go and he hasn't made an impact yet. Sure. You let Braun Strowman go and he hasn't gone anywhere yet, but it's not going to be those guys who hurt you. You know, Daniel Bryan left in a different way. He wanted different challenges, but it won't be those guys. It's going to be the other people. And I don't want to say the 2.0s, but like you see where they're at with just a little bit of effort. I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't think they'll ever get to a level of an FTR, but oh yeah, FTR, you know, that they're going to die by people like that leaving because they don't want wrestlers with experience. They don't want certain things that AEW absolutely puts a value on. So that's where they're really going to hurt from some of this stuff. And there are going to be people that go back to WWE because they can't go anywhere else. And I don't want to say that like Nia Jax, for example, and I said this about Braun Strowman, I can see him. Yeah, he can be an impact. He can be in some other places, but like because of his skill set, because of, you know, his dexterity or lack thereof, as he continues to get older, it's like in some ways, WWE is the best spot for him. So even if he does take a little bit of a pay cut, it still may be the best bet for him, for a guy like him. And I think that's the same way with Nia Jax. But again, they're going to pay people what they want to pay them. Are people still criminally underpaid in that company? Absolutely. For the amount of money they bring in. But this is this is how it goes. Again, their in my mind, their mistake of not seeing value right now in a certain type of performer, which tends to be the experienced independent wrestling fan, you know, and the wrestling fan, they don't want those guys. They're not putting a value on that. That's where they're really gonna hurt. And at some point, those people are gonna make money again in WWE because they're gonna have to, because you know, next in line. Well, well, we'll see how that works out. I always talk about this guy's speed. And not only was he running fast, I don't know if you guys know anything about physics. Oh, educate us. But when one guy is going really fast one direction and it's a stationary man, that's bad. When one guy is running one direction and the other guy is running at him and they they clonk into each other, that's more bad. If Darby Allen leaves the tunnel at 2 p.m. at 30 miles an hour. He left the tunnel at 2 p.m. and he hit this guy at 159. <laughs> He actually went backwards in time. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.